Today, the update is speaking to Simon Singh, a Northrend journalist specializing in maths and science. Simon, thank you for being here today. Uh, good to be here. In a time with so many crises around the world, how can we justify government spending such large sums of money on scientific projects? Okay, that's a big question. Um, and we're going to try and do this whole interview about 10 questions in five minutes. I'm going to hit okay. my button now. I'm going to try and be as quick as I can. Um, I, I, maybe we can't not afford to spend so much money on science. Uh, probably the biggest crisis we face today is climate change. Climate change is happening. It's real. Yeah. We're going to have to face up to it and deal with it. And mm -hmm. we're not going to be able to deal with it through poetry or symphony orchestras. Um, we shouldn't cut budgets <laughs> for those necessarily, mm -hmm. but we do need to invest in science, we need to invest in technology, we need to invest in things that are going to help make our lives better and address some of these crises. Okay. And I know you feel quite strongly about pseudoscience and chiropractic and all that. Why do you think people still turn to it despite all the evidence disproving its effectiveness? Well, if we take something like homeopathy, uh, the reason um, I, I would say people believe in homeopathy when it's clearly cold to wallop, Mm -hmm. um, it, there are many, many reasons. Um, homeopaths are very eloquent. They put over a very strong case. Yeah. Um, they sometimes bend the truth a bit or, or maybe uh, don't know all the facts themselves. So they put over a very, very persuasive arguments. I think some governments are very sloppy. The British government um, spends money on homeopathy. And people think, yeah. well, if the government spends money on it, it must work. Um, high street shops sell it. Mm -hmm. And yet, um, you know, nobody seems to clamp down on selling sugar pills. Yeah. So lack of regulation, lack of spine amongst governments, very dodgy media that likes to spin interesting stories about miracle cures. I think all of these things mislead people. Um, and also, you know, if I have hay fever and I take a homeopathic pill and my hay fever gets better, I'll convince myself it was a homeopathic pill that did it. But it could have been a change in the weather. It could have been all sorts of different things. Mm -hmm. So people will, will misattribute, uh, you know, well, Correlation is not cause, I suppose is yeah. the expression. So I can see why people believe in it, which is why I think it's up to scientists and others to explain why pseudoscience is just pseudoscience. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that religion and science can ever work together, or do you think they should be separate things? Um, I, I, I gave a talk today at school about Georges Lemaitre, a Belgian cosmologist who was a priest. Um, he kept his religion and his science very, very separate. He said, I am religious, but I don't use the Bible to work out theories of the universe. And I am a scientist and I don't use my science to work out my rules of ethics and spirituality. So you can keep them separate and you can do both, but it's tricky. You know, I think if you're a scientist, it's pretty hard to believe in God, but some scientists do. Okay. And what would you say to someone if you were trying to convince, convince them to study science? Um, I wouldn't. If they don't want to, don't do science. If people can't figure out it's the coolest thing in the world, they should go and study humanities. Okay. They deserve to. <laughs> and uh, what's the most interesting and important discovery you've come across in your life? God, it's, uh, God there are so many fascinating, extraordinary areas of science. Um, you know, I, I, I wrote a book about codes and code breaking. Mm -hmm. And there's an incredible code called public key cryptography, which means that I can send you a secret message but I don't have to tell you what my secret encrypting recipe was. You can still decrypt it, even though I didn't tell you how I encrypted it. Uh, now, this is really important because if you buy something online from some company overseas, you want to encrypt your credit card details, but you, don't, you can't tell the company how to decrypt it. They have to work it out themselves. So this sounds impossible. And for me, it's one of the most impossible technologies that's ever been thought of, and yet it's real. Um, it works, it's largely mathematical, and it's revolutionized commerce around the world. Uh, that's the first one that comes to mind. Okay, and leading on from that, what's your take on the case in the US involving Apple and the FBI asking them to unlock their own device? Do you think it's ever right to... I, 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 I must, but I haven't looked into it. The, the problem is, I think you, you can look at a specific case, a specific example, and your immediate reaction might be, gosh, it's really important. You know, Apple must help the police. This is a, a terrorist case, and Apple have a right to protect us all from, from this. But, but yeah, you have to look at the bigger picture. What are the ramifications? What does this mean in terms of privacy for you and me? What does it mean for privacy for everybody else? So before we suddenly um, you know, force a, a company to act because of one case, we just have to think of the ramifications.
Okay. And finally, why do you think it is important that we study science? Okay, we've got 15 seconds. We're going to do this in five minutes. It's fantastic. Uh, we, scientists will build the future. Mm -hmm. Scientists will change the world. Um, and so I just think if people love science, yeah, their parents might say to them, study business or study economics or study something useful. Mm -hmm. But there is nothing more useful than studying science. And when I say science, I mean maths, technology, engineering, computing, all of it is fantastically important. And if, if you're a teenager and you love science, then follow your heart. Mm -hmm. Simon Singh, thank you for your time today. My pleasure. Cheers. Thank you.